I really wanted to show you these guys because I feel like I haven't given them enough attention as I should. I just think they're really beautiful being purple on the outside with those really pretty flowers and this is what it's like on the inside. And they're really yum. Mm. The pods are a bit tough but the peas are really quite nice. I just think it's really pretty. Here's some of the tomato starts. There. You can see some of the leaves don't look super great, but I've um, only just recently put them into these pots and I actually buried them deep. So the stem goes nearly to the bottom of that pot. So they're kind of, um, they've probably got a little bit of shock going on while they get used to their new little pots. This one was from a friend, which, um, so I don't know what the variety it is. It looks like a potato leaf variety. See how it looks? like a bigger leaf and it's not nice and spiky like this I think it's still pretty um, but yeah so that's a mystery one but that's really cool and I've got some more over here these ones really need to be planted out look how tall they are so that's the potato a potato leaf variety as well but this one I know what it is that's the triple crop climbing triple crop oh sorry no this one is oh gosh look at this I've labelled it, but here we go, there's a stick. Okay, cool. <laughs> I thought I just got everything wrong. That's a Dr. Witchies, that one there with that that leaf type that I have. And that's the triple crop with the potato leaf. And this one is also a bonus from a friend of mine. So uh, she said that she thinks it's a money maker. So we'll see. Um, I'm really happy for any free tomato plants or any plants in general. And look at the milkmaid nasturtium now. It looks incredible. Look at it, vining its way up. It didn't do this by itself, I had to help it. So I've just like twisted it in um, the trellis that I've got here. And it seems to take really well at that. It's, uh, it's just gone all over the shop. And look, there's bees. The bees have been here. Maybe if you can see them. It's going in there. Which I think is excellent because I haven't seen many bees because there's not much flowering in my garden at the moment. So that's really cool to see. A couple of starts still here. There's some um, pansies that are really slow. There's some dead <laughs> beetroot seedlings which I neglected so I, I won't be putting them into the garden. Um, and also from uh, the same friend of mine, she gave me some free parsley starts the bee just went right next to my ear she gave me some free parsley starts and there's also a little basil back here that i'm trying to nurture and keep alive um that's a cyclamen dianthus and two mulberry cuttings my two mulberry cuttings i really need to pot them up into bigger pots now actually and my rosemary back there so that's exciting also look at my shirt <laughs> i've been waiting for this shirt for a long time um, I got it from Roots and Refuge Farm. Theirs is a channel that I watch and it was super cool when they put it. They have had a bunch of merch but um, I really wanted to get one of these and it came in the mail yesterday <laughs> so I was excited to wear it for today. It's super comfortable and I just think it's really neat. I think her brother um, drew the design as well because he's a tattooist. But anyway, let me show you what else I've got. These are some of the other tomato starts that I started way back hoping to grow through winter and I finally potted some of them up the ones that back up that we just looked at they um, they need to be potted up you can see how much more growth it gets when it when you give it the soil and the space that it needs I was trying to grow them on just a single stem but some of them um, ended up branching out so this one is actually going to grow um, on two main stems and you can see it's got um, some setting some little blossoms there I keep trying to keep an eye on this because I don't want because it's in a pot it doesn't have as much nutrients as it would in the ground so I'm trying to keep it on just two because they can really get away from you tomatoes I don't know if you can see in there that's another little sucker and I'm just gonna pull that out because then that would be another massive uh, big leader stem and I'm just going to try and keep it to the two if I can because I want to 
give it the best chance it can to give us some tomatoes. And this one here, you can see it's a little bit sick on top and really purplish and the leaves are curling. Actually, this is the one that I put in my little greenhouse um, and covered with extra plastic to keep it safe from the um, any chance of frost because it got a little bit chilly here. Um, and I left it in there too long and so I think I stunted it a little bit um, because it wasn't getting sunlight from the top, it was only getting it from the side. But it's still, like the rest of it still looks healthy. I'm just gonna keep an eye on it and try and baby it because um, I can see it's still a bit stressed. It, some of the leaves are still curling. So I'll keep an eye on that, um, but it should bounce back. And you can see down here, I've got a little blossom bag over one of the old blossoms. This was the first blossom. And so I'm gonna try and save seeds from this one. And then here's two of the other blossoms. They're just so big. They're really pretty. So that's the triple crop. That one is, um, hmm, that one's Dr. Witchies. No, no yeah, that one's, <laughs> so many now. I think I've counted that I have 19 tomato plants. But anyway, that's Dr. Witchies. That's also Dr. Witchies. This is climbing triple crop and that is also climbing triple crop. Climbing triple crop have the potato leaves. And so you can see, I tried to keep this on a single stem, but it's really tricky. Like it, it starts splitting and you don't know, you don't want to pinch off the very top of the tomato plant because then it completely stops growing. So now this one has two <laughs> as well. I haven't staked these ones properly yet. I'm going to eventually um, put the three uh, stakes around to make like a cage. So I'll do that to these two. I just haven't done it yet. So yeah, this one has got some blossoms on it too. Ah, oh, see this? See, this is tricky. I think this will just be... See, look, it nearly looks like it's splitting again, but I think this is just where the main growth is coming from. But see here, there's an extra little one there, but I just want to be so careful. I don't want to accidentally pinch the top off of the tomato plants. But otherwise, I think they look pretty good. They are a little bit purplish, um, which I have heard is it means that there could be some stress or something wrong with the tomato plants, unless they're a um, black variety, like black Russian. So I've been meaning to look into that again. So I'll check that out and we'll find out how that goes later. There's my, there's Mandy. She's getting really tall, but she didn't put on any blossoms, but that's all right. I'll give her a chance to get established, but I'll keep an eye on her. Uh, and we also saw figgies here. I want to try and um, repot figgy before um, she starts putting shoots out again, just to give her a bit more nutrients. And there's Mulby here, and she has heaps of mulberries on her. So that's really neat. Also, we've got another tomato down here. So this one is the, um, not black cherry. This is a tomato tomato that I took a cutting from, from the plant when it was in the garden last, earlier this year. Um, and this is it here. And look how tall it's getting and it's got lots of blossoms on it. It's just amazing seeing the difference in the size of the blossoms from the cherries to the big beefsteak tomatoes. There's a massive difference. And so it's got a fair bunch of blossoms on it. It's also, the leaves down the bottom are yellowing a little bit. So I just want to be careful that I'm not spreading any disease around, like if that's blight or something. I'm not sure, but that's why I've kept the other tomatoes away from this one. So yeah, we'll see. See how we go with those tomatoes. And also, some tomatoes that I put into the bed. So I planted these out a little while ago. There's three of the climbing triple crop and one of the Dr. Witches in there. And in this spot, I have potatoes. These are Pontiac potatoes and they have a reddish skin. And so I'm trying um, the method, I think it's called the Ruth Stout method, but basically you put the potatoes um, on top of the soil and then cover them with a thick hay or, or mulch. And so that's what I've done here. So there's nine potatoes in there um, and they should be strong enough to actually push 
their little leaves out the top. So that's that, which is really cool. It's really awesome to have some things in these big beds already. I didn't think I would get it in this soon. And I've just marked it so that I know where the potatoes go up to so I don't accidentally plant into where the potatoes are. And the rest of the garden. Um, some things are doing great. Some things are petering out. I'm trying to work out what I'm going to do with this because it's getting it's getting a little bit warmer, not a whole lot yet, but I want to amend the beds before we start the spring garden. But it's going to be a little bit tricky because some things are still uh, not to their end yet and haven't produced, but some things I'll be able to take out soon. So let's have a look. So the strawberries I'm going to keep here because I've heard that strawberries are good to keep for about three years. That was its, it's still in its first year. Um, so this will be its second year and look, it's starting to, like only just recently, it started to put on some nice strawberries again. You can see the ants are still getting some. And these are these are all ones that have been um, eaten and I pull them off the plant and just leave them in there to break down and put the nutrients back into the soil or I'll put it into the compost. But yeah. Mmm. That's really nice. It's so cool to be able to come down here and just grab a snack from the garden. Um, and so this here, these are poppies. I think there's a whole bunch there. I planted in a row and they have all come up here. So they apparently will come up in spring. So these ones I'll leave in there. These are beetroots. They've taken a really long time, I think. But this was the spot where I had a whole bunch of flowering Napa cabbages. So they really shaded out this whole section. So well I'm leaving these they've got they've put on a lot of fresh new leaves so I'm going to leave them for a little bit to see how they go and then I'll harvest them and, and might just roast them or um, I have made a chocolate cake with beetroot before so we'll see and here are some of the black nebula carrots hoping that they um, put on a decent root so that we can harvest them and these are the Kuroda carrots here. So they're starting to look a lot bigger now that they've actually got a lot more sunlight. Um, but we'll see because I really want to amend these beds. There's a lot of clay in here. And even though we've put um, compost on top, I want to um, mix it up. And my plan is to put some gypsum in it, which helps to um, bind some of the clay particles together so it's not as dense and so it um, helps to put more air pockets in the soil so that water can water and nutrients can get right down and so that the roots can go the plants roots can go right down and grab all that nutrients that it needs my comfrey here i think i planted it too deep because <laughs> i did i think because it's um there's little leaves down there but uh the top leaves aren't doing so great there's the last flowering napa cabbage i've only left that in there for um pollinators um, and because this one's not causing not nearly as much shade as the other ones were but I can see that it's getting a bit of powdery mildew on it so it'll definitely be coming out soon here are some of the leeks bit of a bummer these ones haven't done super great for me anyway it's, it's probably not them it's probably me um, I was expecting them to be a lot bigger by now because I want to be able to get these beds ready for spring soon and I was expecting them to be much bigger so we'll just see how that goes the sugar snaps have been really cool the only thing is I was um hoping that they would get bigger I was really expecting the peas to like really cover up this trellis you can see these ones here the green feast are kind of small but look at that that's the blue shelling snow pea and it's ma massive I've had to tie it onto the trellis because it's gone up and now it's hanging down but so I was surprised that these ones are still a bit small. The uh, sugar snap pea, I'm going to leave this in because we just munch on it. Nothing gets inside, we just munch on it. Um, it's falling down. I want to put a little bird treat up there. I don't know if they'll eat it, but yeah. So I'll leave this in here to snack on. Um, I can see that it's starting to get some powdery mildew in it. Um, but I'll leave it until I'm ready to change this whole bed. On the other side though, this one has really bad powdery mildew, the green feast pea. It could be because this cauliflower um, blocks a lot of the sun. 
So I just want to leave this in to show you guys because then I'm going to rip it out because I don't want the powdery mildew spreading everywhere and it's only got a couple of um, pea pods left so I'll harvest them and then I'll rip that out. And in this bed, I'm really excited. I've actually left it a little bit long, I think, because see how it's um, starting to separate a little bit, like it's a bit gappy. It's not like a tight head. Um, but I just really wanted to show you guys before I took it out because I'm really excited to get this. This one, I can't remember what the name is called. If I remember, I'll put it up on the screen. I think it was an early Jessie. It is, I still got my tag. So that's an, that's an early Jessie cauliflower. So I'm actually gonna harvest that now and put it into my basket. So the basket, my harvesting basket that I have that I finally get to use now, I'm getting more, is this one here. And actually one of our friends from church, he made this and he uh, gave it to a shop in Tenerfield to sell. We went to Tenerfield because we have family there. I found this, I saw his name on it as the creator and I bought that. So <laughs> he's like half an hour away from us, but we drove like two and a half, three hours to a different town and bought it there. I just think it's really cool. I do, I do probably need to, um, I do want to, oh there's a, a helicopter, there's a rescue helicopter. I do want to um, waterproof that, um, I haven't done it yet but today it'll be fine. Alright so I just brought a little knife, <laughs> I've never harvested a cauliflower before, um, so I think you just cut it, I think I just cut it. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh. I think I did it. Oops. <laughs> Look at that. I grew that. <laughs> oh, that's really neat. It smells like cauliflower. And look, I don't know, I'm not sure why, but it's got like a purplish tinge on it. And so do the stems. <laughs> shell's gone that's so cool and I have another one to harvest too <laughs> our flight path is directly under where everybody goes back to the airport so that's pretty cool so this one actually had lots of aphids on the plant um, and the way I dealt with that mostly was actually just spraying it um, really thoroughly with the hose to actually just physically blow them off. You see another one here. It's like they're like little grey aphids. They get kind of big. So I also just squash them now. I'm not as squeamish as I was originally. Okay. Let's get this one. Oh yeah, that works pretty well. Oh, I can see a couple more aphids hiding out in there. Get that! So this one's a different variety. This one is mini cauliflower, I think. It looks much more yellow. There's like a tiny little bit of insect damage as well. I wonder if that could have been aphids. Um, I'll be definitely soaking this when I get inside to get rid of any aphids that are left in there. I can see a bunch. And I've heard if you soak them in salt water, if there's any slugs in there, it will um, get them out as well. Cool! That's pretty neat. So that's two cauliflowers. I'll show you my last one, but it's not ready yet in here it's a lot smaller but he I haven't really seen much insect activity on him so that's pretty neat that's the same as the other one it's a mini cauliflower so I feel like I'm skipping all over the place today but that's all right um, I've still got some perpetual spinach in the middle uh, in the front of this middle bed some marigold this lettuce that I wanted to keep to show you guys it's really really gone to seed now these are all the flower buds um, so when they open, uh, the, they'll have beautiful flowers and hopefully lots of 
pollinators will come and check that out and it'll dry up and then uh, they will be lettuce seeds. And if you let it go to seed um, and dry up, then you'll pretty much always have lettuce growing in this spot because uh, so many seeds will drop out. This just produces like hundreds of seeds. And here's the, that's the same lettuce down right next to it, not gone to seed. It's probably getting ready to. I'll show you through here. This is also the same variety. Look at that, it's going to seed. It's going up nice and tall. We haven't been eating off them much. I prefer the spinach and the kale, honestly. Oh, I just noticed there is actually some powdery mildew on this one. Well, that's okay, it doesn't seem to be harming it at all. It looks incredible. Down here, more beetroots here. They're very nice and leafy, but not, um, I can't really see much root. Oh, that one's not too bad. I might try and thin them anyway. Let me just pull one out. I'm curious. It's gonna twist it. Wow, that is funky looking. Look at all the little roots. Put it in my basket. This bed anyway, I sewed a bunch, that's a weed, a bunch of more radishes in here because I really liked sautéing them and um, usually they're like a 30-ish day variety and also I noticed this the other day. Can you see these? I let, I left a, um, a zinnia flower head stay in here and so I think these are quite possibly zinnias coming up. I don't know if I'll leave them there, but for now, while I'm not doing anything with the beds, they can stay. I don't know what's going on with these. There's a broccoli. There's no broccoli. This and this, they're also both broccoli. They're the purple ones. Do you see? Purple and purple. They have nothing in them. So I don't know if I need to wait longer or if they had just too much nitrogen and so they're just nice and leafy but like this thing is massive it's huge I'll leave it for now these kale are finally getting um, bigger because they were just super shaded out um, from the other plants I had here before we had capsicum lettuce and the radishes actually got really big too um, so I'm glad that they're looking better. I love these ones. They, they remind me of like coral. They're very like sturdy little plants. Really neat. Gotta check them for aphids though. They haven't done too bad. These ones that the aphids like to hide under here as well. So that's the blue curled scotch kale. Um, this one looks really roughly but see the next one next to it's kind of more of a flat leaf. But they're the same variety. This one is dino kale. Um, I harvested off this just the other day which was really um so I like sauteing onions and then wilting this down in it and having it with a poached egg. It's really good. So this one, see, you just keep harvesting from the bottom and it'll just keep growing and growing. There's more beets down here. Little, little radishes everywhere. And these are, there's, that's leek actually. There's some leeks in there and there's some spring onions over there. Um, this one back around here as well. This is a perpetual spinach. So um, I like this variety. Yeah. <laughs> These are spring onions that we bought from the shops and didn't use them before they were starting to wilt. And so I planted them out and now these, they are these massive things. There's like eight of them. Oh, in there as well, there's more kale. These ones, I haven't checked the, the little blue curled scotch ones, but there's one missing. There, I pulled it out. It was a, it was a dino kale, like that one, um, but it was just covered in aphids, or like right in the middle of it. The aphids were right down in the middle. Mm. Looks okay-ish at the moment, but yeah, they got right down in the middle and there were just too many, so I just pulled it out because I didn't want them to infest the whole garden. And on the end here, the um, nasturtium is like really taking off. This is a milkmaid nasturtium, sorry, milkmaid nasturtium as well. So you can see the pretty flowers in there. And also sneaking up, this is a pea. I planted one random pea at the bottom of this stake. 
um, and it's growing up. It's climbing. It's using the nasturtium as its trellis. Um, these ones, these are the broccolis that have actually given me some broccoli. So we've got like a little head, but there, um, it was looking like it was nearly going to actually flower. Uh, and aphids were coming to check it out, so I chopped that off. And now it's sprouting um, all these little broccoli stems. So I just, um, I've been cutting them off there and I've just been sauteing them in a little bit of olive oil and putting a bit of salt on top and it's just amazing. The leaves, when you saute them, uh, they go like really crispy. It was, I was actually really surprised, they're really good. Um, and this one over here, same thing, the head's gone, but I'm just harvesting all these little side shoots as they come along. So these ones do good. I'm really glad that they've come along. And this, I'm really excited about this one because this is a pink cushion and I bought it when it had flowers and it hasn't flowered in months. And these have all come up. They look, so it was all just like these normal leaves. And then these have all popped up. These extra like thin spiky, they're not spiky, but these different kind of leaves shooting up. These are all going to be flowers. So I'm super excited about that because I know that the insects really liked it. The pollinators really liked it last time. I don't know why that one's looking really limp. I did water it this morning. I'll leave it. Maybe it'll recover. Hmm. This is some of the spring onion that I planted from seed. So it's finally getting bigger now, which is kind of neat. But these ones are like definitely taking the cake but these ones were bought so that's not fair I think that is most of the garden at the moment still got my herb planter down here with the parsley really taking over there's some oregano or oregano if you will underneath there and the chives the chives are kind of suffering a lot but they've got new growth but um I think it, this get this dries out a bit quick yeah, the parsley is like really going to town, which is cool. Oh, my garlics. I have no idea how this is going to go. I don't think I'm the best garlic grower. They look yellowing again. And I'm like, I don't know if I should water more or if I've watered too much. I really haven't done the best at checking that out, but this is learning. So yeah. Oh, and my little carrots down there. You can see them. Still good fun. Really excited for summer. But this is what it looks like in August.